Good evening. I would like to thank each one of you for being here with us at this live session from Masa University, Saujana Putra campus. I am Sabita, lecturer at the Faculty of Health Sciences, Masa University, and I will be moderating today's session. Today's webinar topic, Rajan's Eclectic Approach for Stroke, is proudly organized by the Faculty of Health Sciences, Masa University. Dear viewers, before we proceed further, I would like to give you a brief overview of the programs offered by the Faculty of Health Sciences at Masai University. The Faculty of Health Sciences comprises of the School of Physiotherapy, Envirom, Department of Environmental Health, Department of Medical Imaging. So under the School of Physiotherapy, it encompasses the Diploma in Physiotherapy Program, Bachelor of Physiotherapy Program, Bachelor of Physiotherapy through all Open Distance Learning, and Master of Physiotherapy. Under the Department of Environmental Health, we have the Diploma in Environmental Health, Bachelor of Environmental Health and Safety, Bachelor of Environmental uh, Health and Safety, Open Distance Learning, and Diploma in Occupational Safety and Health. Department of Medical Imaging has the following programs, Diploma in Medical Imaging, Radiography, Bachelor of Medical Imaging, and Bachelor of Medical Imaging, Open Distance Learning. So why join Health Sciences course? So there's a high job demand in essential services, no boring work routine, and lucrative remuneration, low risk of job redundancy, an opportunity to work in a variety of settings, a career you can feel good about. Correct decision to join FIHS Massa University. So here in Massa, we have an experienced and dedicated international pool of academic staff. And we also have varied study modes like conventional mode, open and distance mode, distance learning mode. We also have cross teaching by experts. Masa has the most number of health disciplines in a single institution among IPGS. Interactive teaching and emphasis on hands-on clinical skills decision uh, in two platforms, face-to-face -face and online platform. There's a wide list of hospitals and institutions for clinical and industrial placement, and it's also accredited by MQA and JPA with international recognition. We also have a dual award with ARC. So uh, next, we'll be seeing the different uh, programs and the entry requirement for the courses in MASA. So first is Master of Physiotherapy. We have a one-year program, which is full-time, and a two-year program, which is part-time. And these are the entry requirements. And at the degree level, we have Bachelor of Physiotherapy and Bachelor of Physiotherapy Open and Distance Learning course, Bachelor of Environmental Safety and Health, and Bachelor of Environmental Safety and Health Open and Distance Learning. Bachelor of Medical Imaging and Bachelor of Medical Imaging Open and Distance Learning. These are the entry requirements for the degree courses. At the diploma level, we have the Diploma in Physiotherapy, Diploma in Environmental Health, Diploma in Medical Imaging. These are the entry requirements for the diploma courses. Diploma in Occupational Safety and Health. This is another program and it's a three-year program. And this is the entry requirement for the program. So for more details, you can visit www.masa.edu.my. So there are some scholarships offered by the Masa University. They are the Haji Abdullah Academic Excellence Scholarship, Foundation Scholarship, Blue Ribbon Scholarship, School Teacher Scholarship, Family Scholarship, and Single Parent Scholarship. For more details about the scholarships, you can visit www.masa.edu.my. So these are some of the collaborations and affiliations the Masa University has with different associations and universities. And we also have a student mobility program. So this is a two-week training program where we send students to different universities. And this picture is the picture of our students going to Irio Sosa University in Japan. And this is a lovely professional university in India. And this is Sri Vijaya University in Indonesia. So 
We welcome you all to join us and for more details, please contact www.masa.edu. Please contact us through MASA website or through our faculty Facebook page to know more about our programs or simply leave a comment, we will get back to you. Your questions concerning this webinar session can be listed in the chat box. So now, without further ado, we will move on to our next session, the webinar. So today's webinar is titled a Rajan's Eclectic Approach for Stroke. Stroke is a challenging condition where physiotherapy plays an exemplary role in bringing back the potential of an impaired individual. The eclectic approach developed by Prof. Tyagarajan is an integrated approach which addresses all the components of hemiplegic recovery. It is completely evidence-based approach for hemiplegics, which is unlike the traditional physiotherapy. This webinar will focus on understanding the concepts and importance of eclectic approach in stroke rehabilitation. Eclectic approach was designed in 2006 by Mr. Tyagarajan to overcome the treatment difficulties faced by practitioners in managing stroke patients. Each technique application will be rational and justified accordingly. So now let me give you an introduction about our speaker. Prof. Tyagarajan holds a master's degree in physiotherapy, specializing in neurosciences with more than 20 years of academic and clinical experience. He has presented in more than 30 national and international conferences and conducted over 70 workshops on stroke and myofascial trigger point therapy worldwide. He has also developed the eclectic approach for stroke management, which has received accreditation in various countries. He has been honored with five national level professional awards for significant contribution in the field of physiotherapy. Welcome, Prof. Tyagarajan. The virtual platform is all yours. Sabita, ma'am, am I audible? Yes, Prof, you're audible. Yes. So, thank you very much for the wonderful in, uh, introduction. Uh, very good afternoon, uh, guys. Uh, let's have a discussion on uh, eclectic approach for stroke. So all able to see the screen? Sabita ma'am, the screen is visible? Okay. So, <clears throat> I'm Dagraja from uh, Chennai. Uh, had a wonderful introduction from ma'am. I'm, I'm a first contact practitioner in uh, Rado Physiotherapy and Advanced Rehab Center in Chennai. This is my own center. I was former principal uh, in uh, physiotherapy in Santosh Medical College, NCR, New Delhi. I have conducted more than 70 workshops, hands-on workshops in both national and international destinations. Recipient of five national level awards. You can see all the details in my website, ragophysio.com. So I've been invited by Dubai Health Authority. I have conducted a workshop in Rashid Ali Hospital. It's a four days hands-on workshop in stroke, eclectic approach for stroke. This was uh, conducted by government of Dubai. Then Ministry of Health, Oman, 
uh, I have conducted a four days hands on workshop in eclectic approach for stroke in Muscat Institute of Health Sciences, then in Academy of Bangladesh, Bahio Rehab a Research Academy in Malaysia, and I have been um, uh, faculty uh, uh, for uh, conference faculties for uh, AIMS, AHCC Mumbai, Pune, Bangalore, Hyderabad, Chennai, Kerala, Punjab. Uh, etc and i have given uh, online presentations to various countries and recently i have given a presentation in qatar this is from uh, dubai health authority technology with certificate this is from muscat sultanate of oman this is from malaysia this is from bangladesh and this is from qatar uh, this are uh, this were the countries i have been visited and i have given uh, hands on training uh, to the physios uh, in those countries um, the topic was stroke eclectic approach for stroke it, it's a four days hands-on training uh, course i have been awarded with five uh, professional awards by indian association of physiotherapy uh, for significant contribution award then from the aims new delhi then savita university chennai and uh, pune uh, maharashtra and again uh, a 58th IAP National Conference in Chennai been awarded as significant contribution, significant achievement award has been conferred. Sir, so, uh, so few certificates they can share with you. Now coming to the topic, eclectic approach in stroke rehabilitation. Before that, just let me check with the moderator whether I am audible. Any changes they need? Please let me know any changes you need. My voice. Yes, it's good. Clarity, yes, sound. Yeah. Everything yes, is okay. Yes, yes. Can I proceed with this same mode? Yes, yes, no, you can proceed. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. So coming to eclectic approach in stroke rehabilitation. The purpose of my presentation is to emphasize the importance and to refresh and review the golden concepts of neurological approaches. There are various approaches you might be knowing PNF, Bobat, uh, Brunstrom, Motor Relearning Program, uh, Task Oriented Approach, etc. But there is a common habit of comparing these approaches, which is superior. Some people will say Bobath is superior and it will give uh, wonderful results than the other approaches. The rest will say, no, no, neurodevelopmental therapy is best. The other people, they say motor relearning program is best. So like this, people started comparing the approaches. Actually, the comparison itself is wrong because each approach has its own merits and demerits. If you take uh, any approach, you can't you use a single approach throughout the recovery phase. You can't use the same approach what you used in acute stage. Uh, you can't use it in chronic stage. So it's very uh, difficult because each approach designed on different neurological principles. Uh, for example, you say <clears throat> Brunstrom Movement Therapy. Brunstrom Movement Therapy is purely based on postural reflexes, associated reactions, etc. So, uh, Brunstrom says the hemiplegic recovery is of seven stages. Every client, hemiplegic client, or say hemiplegic patient, will travel from stage one to stage seven. So it says that mild synergy, moderate synergy, full synergy, then uh, out of synergy components will start. Then the patient will come to near normal movement. Then it will be a relative normal recovery stage like that. So stage wise, the recovery happens here in Brunstrom. Uh, she emphasized to use associated reactions, postural reflexes, etc. to initiate muscle tone, to initiate movement. The biggest problem or limitation in Brunstrom movement therapy is 
uh, we have to start from acute flaccid stage we we should develop synergy in that patient then we have to break the synergy then combine the flexor and extensor synergy then finally you have to uh, go into isolated individual movements the problem with that uh, the in that uh, sequence is most of us will land up in in any one of the stage either in we will we'll fall into full synergy or we will fall into mild synergy or we will fall into full synergy with uh, full synergy diminishing uh, with some combined movements so in such cases you can't achieve isolated movements that is the biggest problem we face while treating uh, stroke clients if you see if you ask any patient to uh, lift the arm they will move it in a flexor synergy pattern so if you ask the patient to walk they will move to circumductor gait pattern so like this there will be either extensor synergy in lower limb or flexor synergy in upper limb most of the time flexor synergy is very common in upper limb and um, in lower limb extensor synergy is very common the reasons are many we will discuss later this because we have short of time so in general you can't use a single approach in in a hemiplegic patient throughout the phase of recovery so depending on the stage depending on the requirement you should select a approach for example if the patient is in acute flaccid case uh, stage acute flaccid hemiplegia in this situation motor relearning program has a very 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 limited role so in acute flaccid condition what is the main aim of the physiotherapy is uh, to bring or uh, to initiate to initiate muscle contraction to initiate movement to uh, facilitate near normal movement pattern so this will be the primary uh, aim in, in that case so in such situation motor relearning program has very limited role in initiating a muscle contraction or initiating a movement um, pattern in a flaccid case so in such situation using motor relearning program will not be successful so in in this case again bobat also has a limited role so here brunstrom has a major role in flaccid condition once the movements are initiated then your bobat and motor relearning program has major role than brunstrom once the patient is able to do some individual movements then you can club pnf if there is a need otherwise each approach plays a vital role in certain stages of recovery so this is the uh, core uh, thing which we should understand say after my 20 years of uh, stroke uh, handling stroke cases i am very i am thoroughly satisfied i am crystal clearly understood that every approach is important one every approach has its own merits and demerits number 3 you we have to use the right approach to the right patient in a right time to get a right improvement this is the thing which i understood so don't compare the approaches every approach what we learn in our neurological physiotherapy are golden approaches there is no doubt in it way for optimal stroke rehabilitation what to do this is the state of patients and even physios sometime there are many shareholders of physical therapy nowadays you see medical paramedical technicians siddha unani homeopathy ayurveda etc here you see um, if you if you see in hospital wards um, the nurse used to say um, the caretaker or the doctor sometime used to say the caretakers move the limb keep keep doing the exercises to your clients make him walk sometimes this this will become harmful So each and every stimuli matters a lot in a hemiplegic patient where we touch how we hold in in which movement you are facilitating the in which posture you are facilitating the movement so like this like this many things are very essential in a hemiplegic patient because each and every stimuli in acute flaccid condition will will uh, play, play a very important Uh, role in uh, stage in the stages of recovery so paramedical again you see most of the time the other we have uh, uh, some um, um, misunderstanding with misunder with the other uh, staffs 
most of the time this occupational therapy people will start um, uh, giving exercises to the upper limb they say they will take care of upper limb no it is wrong occupational therapy has to play role only in modification of the environment and the equipments needed to a person to complete the activities of daily living that's it so in that aspect they have to proceed so they doesn't have any role in icu recently i have heard that the occupational therapists are um, um, trying to uh, treat stroke patients in uh, um, icus or in wards uh, it's funny what is the role of them to do nothing they they don't need they 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 are not uh, uh, they, in a positive sense, I say uh, there is no role for them. So they have to wait till the patient comes out. Till uh, they have to wait till the patient is been referred to them for occupational related uh, uh, training. That's it. The profession itself says it is occupational therapy. So there is no need for them to worry about stretching, strengthening, bobat, nothing. Technicians. Again, there are some te technicians trying to over, uh, overlook uh, physiotherapy. Siddha and Unani, again, they say with Siddha and Unani medicine, it will cure, no need of physiotherapy. So homeopathy, the same, it goes. Ayurveda, one step ahead, they say we will treat everything, no need of physiotherapy. We will give Ayurvedic massage and we will make the patient walk. We will make everything perfect and 100% success. No, absolutely not possible without a proper physiotherapy proper neurological physiotherapy a stroke patient will never ever come to the fullest recovery again the acupuncture people acupuncturist also says that with uh, acupuncture uh, we will treat the stroke patient no need of physiotherapy so like this there are many misconceptions in the society which which should be eradicated through our uh, potential recovery There are modernized equipments, EMG biofeedback, locomat. There are, there are many equipments have been uh, used in uh, physiotherapy. So here the, the sad truth, the sad truth or bitter fact, whatever you, you take uh, in a positive sense. Without a proper manual physiotherapy, that is without using these approaches, concept-based approaches, these hi-fi equipments will not give any potential recovery. Uh, one, one second. I want to check uh, the moderator. Uh, please let me know whether my presentation is audible and it is going in a proper way. Any modification is needed, please let me know. Yes, it's audible. We can see the slides clearly. We can carry on. Ma'am, my presentation is okay. Are you able yes. to? See? Yes, we can hear. It's clear. So, can, yeah, can I proceed? Uh, yeah, proceed. Yes. So, there are uh, many equipments, high file uh, equipments, premium equipments have uh, come to our physiotherapy department to, uh, to add uh, new weapons in our box. Uh, but Stroke physiotherapy is full of neurological techniques than equipments. For example, uh, this equipment is used to make a stroke patient to walk. Here, this is merely a passive gait training to a hemiplegic stroke patient. Or you say a spinal cord injury or whatever may be the injury. Let us take stroke as an example uh, in, in this, uh, with this equipment. It will be of a passive gait training. It has very, very, very less input on cortical reorganization since it is passive. If you put a flaccid hemiplegic patient to walk in this, do you think that the muscle contractions will initiate? Flaccid, I am talking about flaccid uh, hemiplegic client. Do you think that it will be the muscle contraction will get initiated? Initiated. I am not asking for facilitation. Initiated or the movement initiation will come? Very negligible. 
you have to manually elicit the muscle contraction by using the techniques from Brunstrom, Bobath or whatever it is. You have to initiate movement contract movement uh, uh, from uh, initiations of isolated movement initiations in an acute hemiplegic patient. Then only these machines will, these equipments will facilitate the movement and make the patient to achieve a bit more. So what I'm saying to be to, to state simple to, to state in a simple way, these equipments will not start from zero. These equipments will not help when the patient is in zero. To put the patient in this equipment, you need some movements, you need some muscle contractions as a criteria, eligible criteria. Otherwise, if you put a flaccid hemiplegic limb in this equipment, it will not initiate muscle contraction or it will not initiate movement, um, isolated movements. Same, the concept what I told is applicable for all the equipments. You take this armio, again, you need some amount of muscle contraction or some amount of individual movements or collective movements to use these equipments. Otherwise, if the equipment moves your limb, then it will become a passive, passive, passive movement. Again, there are some controversies will arise. If you make the patient to grip the uh, grip the armio equipment device like this, it will facilitate flexor synergy. Even this movement in a acute hemiplegic patient will facilitate flexor synergy and it will spoil the whole show. Virtual reality concepts. Again, I'm saying if the patient is not having um, individual movements or some amount of muscle contractions to elicit a movement to play this game, the patient will start developing compensatory movements, trick movements. Very simply to say it is trick movements. Otherwise, technically we say compensatory movements, which is not at all advisable to elicit or to facilitate or to train in the name of these virtual games. If the person is playing the game, you take this first picture. If the person is playing this game by moving the arm in a flexor synergy pattern up and down, then it will worsen with flexor synergy. So this game indirectly will facilitate and strengthen the flexor synergy of this client. And this client will not develop in movements out of synergy. I mean, individual isolated movements will become very, very, very difficult if you allow the person to play the game with a compensatory movement or a synergistic movement. Most of the games, most of the time, most of the time, the, most of the clients will start playing the game by using compensatory movements. So it is very, very, very dangerous in later stages of recovery. Again, <clears throat> this is a fun functional electrical stimulation. This is a bit useful in certain stages of recovery. Again, you should make sure that the client is not become addicted to this equipment or the client muscle and movement should not get addicted to this equipment. That is very important. Dependency is very, very, very uh, dangerous uh, in, in this uh, equipment usage. 3D gait analysis. Again, it's a wonderful uh, tool for research aspects. Botulinum toxin, antispastic drugs. Um, yeah, these drugs are uh, useful in uh, spastic hemiplegic cases, especially if it is um, modified Ashworth scale 1 plus 2, definitely this antispastic drugs will help. One thing we should understand in this, I don't, we, we, we should not worry about the side effects of antispastic drugs because it will be prescribed 
in such a way that the client is not getting any harmful effects with these drugs. One important point we should understand with this is if you treat a hemiplegic patient, make sure that the patient, the time, the therapy time should be like after 10 15 minutes of this antispastic drugs. And the therapy should be done before one or two hours maximum after taking antispastic drugs because the antispastic drugs has certain duration um, uh, effect the duration will be less so we should use the effect of antispastic drugs while giving therapy so the patient will have a pliable flexible bit flexible uh, muscle uh, so that we can try for out of synergy movements that is anti synergistic movements or anti spastic movements or you can say um, isolated movements so these anti spastic drugs that after consuming these drugs after taking these drugs the physiotherapy should be started immediately within 2 hours of this drug consumption the therapy should be completed so that the fullest effect of the antispastic medication can be used to train anti synergistic movements, or you can say isolated movements, in other words, so that we can easily try. So, these technologies are we should think whether it is a gift or rift. Does all this technology development give full recovery? Absolutely no. If you use only robotic therapy for the hemiplegic patients, without using these approaches. Do you think you will succeed with this? No. Robotic therapy is a part of neurological physiotherapy. It's a stroke physiotherapy, you say. It will help to a certain extent. Still, there is a big lacuna in stroke recovery. Even these sometimes people used to say, no, robotic therapy will give good recovery. People will, um, all these uh, stroke clients will rush to that robotic therapy centers. Even I have seen many of uh, the um, clients, um, they have rushed to robotic uh, centers and they paid a huge lump sum amount to get treated. But after uh, 30 days or say three weeks, there is not much difference. Even after using a crores and crores of rupee equipment, if a stroke client is not getting the fullest recovery from that, then we should think where is the problem. See, the problem is if the client is not treated with, if the stroke client is not treated with neurological approaches, even this crores and crores rupee equipment will not help you to get the fullest recovery or to the satisfactory recovery. So all this cost and glamour will attract the clients, uh, make uh, uh, the clinicians to refer to robotic centers. But the, the hidden fact, the hidden truth, is without neurological approaches, these equipments will not give help you. That's very, very important. We should accept and understand. Loss of professional uh, manpower. See, with this robotic equipment, if the patient starts taking passive movements in, so it won't be much fruitful. So in the near future, we will get uh, robotic robots to give passive movement to our stroke clients. So these, okay, it is accepted under the supervision of physios, we can use it, but we should feel the uh, patient tissue and movement by giving healing touch than depending solely on equipments and robots. The solution for, see, I'm talking especially for uh, stroke, hemiplegic pa uh, patients. Uh, that robotic therapy, um, that um, locomat, um, you know, these are all, especially the locomount is, is a wonderful equipment for subconscious or comatose patients. It's a wonderful equipment for head injury clients, especially those who are in subconscious stage or in comatose stage. So there are various approaches we know. Bobath approach, Brunstrom approach, motor relearning program, uh, Patricia Davis, Margaret Johnston, Roots approach, task-oriented approach. 
so it is clear no approach is no single approach is useful throughout the recovery phases and each approach has its own merits and demerits you should know which approach to be used in uh, which phase of recovery and you should know when to switch over to the other approaches in that up selected approach you should know which technique should be utilized to that component so these are the things we should understand we should know before uh, treating a stroke patient so we should there is a approach called eclectic approach this is the approach which is a combination of all these approaches the important factor in this approach is this approach will tell you which technique should be used in which stage when to use that technique when to wean the technique when to switch over to the next technique what is expected what is the expected result from that technique each and everything like a protocol like a timetable like a protocol this approach will help you in training uh, treating a hemiplegic clients current status of eclo eclectic approach for stroke is an infantile stage it is globally accepted that no single approach can be useful in stroke physiotherapy eclectic is the only solution few evidences we can see journal of health sciences from poland they have conducted a study eclectic versus specific approach within contemporary neurological physiotherapy and they have concluded that eclectic approach is one of the dominant approaches within contemporary neurological physiotherapy in among stroke physiotherapy journal of physical therapy in 2005 conducted in usa uh, physical therapy interventions for patients with stroke in patient rehabilitation facilities 972 patients it's a huge 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 number 972 is not a easy number especially in uh, uh, neuro uh, studies it's a excellent number 972 it's a huge number 972 patients with stroke receiving physical therapy services at six rehabilitation facilities in the united states and they have concluded that study by saying no single approach or techniques proved beneficial in in their client treatments so again they have emphasized to go for a combined approach so now coming to eclectic approach we should first definition eclectic approach involves the formation of a new theory which is produced from a combination of several other theories and which ultimately replaces the other theories here the keyword is produced from a combination of several other theories it is a combination of several other theories that is an eclectic approach the meaning of eclectic is deriving ideas from a broad and diverse range of sources so we have to derive the ideas or the theories from various sources and we should put together in a right form in a right way and that will be a eclectic approach an eclectic thinker is one who selectively adopts ideas from different sources and combines them in the development of a new theory so we should be an eclectic thinker in treating hemiplegic patients by formulating and using this eclectic approach so eclectic approach is a combination of various approaches like bobat brunstrom pnf root dave british davis margaret johnston motor relearning program neurodevelopmental therapy etc so right right principle for stroke so i used to say a right technique to a to a right patient to a right component in a right time will give you a right improvement so this always this this should be your thumb rule and this should be the mantra in treating stroke patients you should select a correct technique right technique that to to a right patient to a right component in a right time if any one right goes wrong here then you will not get right improvement it will be a wrong improvement or a delayed improvement or a nil improvement so you should select a right so for this you should understand for this you should understand the eclectic approach then only you can 
select a right technique then only you should know then then only you will know which is right technique who is the right patient to it and which component is right to fix this and what is the right time to start with and to wean it so this how we should get trained with eclectic approach to treat a hemiplegic patient so uh, once again i want to confirm whether i am audible whether things are going ma'am is it okay am i am i audible to all able to follow me lecture yes bro so can yes, i proceed here you yeah proceed proceed please. yes so now coming to eclectic approach so the concept the core concept is you should assess for movement tone postural and primitive reflexes first you should assess these in this postural and primitive reflexes plays a very important role in stroke clients now once you understood the movement tone posture and primitive reflexes status of a client the first thing you should do is normalize the tone you should normalize the tone then facilitate normal movement patterns emphasize selective movements with selective techniques simultaneously prevent musculoskeletal deficits train with functional incorporation finally enhance generalizability generalizability means a client should be in a position to perform a yeah, activity in all type of in environment in different types of environment for example if you train sit to stand in your physiotherapy department and you make you you um, made the patient to perform the activity perfect the patient uh, has learned the activity and he is able to do sit to stand activity in your clinic in your uh, department with the chair we what you provided he is able to do so he you are saying yes he is able to do sit to stand without any support so with balance he is able to do perfectly so the patient should be able to do the same sit to stand movement which is required in a washroom from toilet commode he has to do a sit to stand activity to come out of the commode he has to do the same sit to stand in a wheelchair in a wheelchair he has to do the same sit to stand movement to come out of the wheelchair same in bed in sofa etc different types of seating environments if the person is not able to do all these activities all all in all these environments the sit to stand movement then the training is not full the training is not complete so you should make sure that the sit to stand activity what you have trained in your clinic in your therapy department the patient should be able to utilize the same sit to stand in all the activities which is required uh, like out of wheelchair out of commode out of bed etc so that is called generalizability so a person should be able to do a activity in all types of environment that is called generalizability so then only your therapy is full steps to approach coming to flaccid patient let us take a flaccid patient you should use reflexes associated reactions and key points these three plays a vital major role in initiating muscle contraction also in initiating movement what we use normally is proprioceptive and extraceptive stimuli what we say to a flaccid patient we used to say the traditional physiotherapy is to give a quick stretch or a 
or stroking or tapping or electrical inputs passive movements joint compressions proprioceptive inputs joint compression that is weight bearing see all these proprioceptive and extraceptive stimulus is not enough or is not sufficient or efficient in initiating a muscle contraction or in initiating a movement you should all you should use these reflexes postural reflexes primitive reflexes associated reactions key points to initiate muscle contraction and or or a movement initiation in a flaccid limb so our traditional physiotherapy inputs are not efficient or sufficient to initiate muscle contraction or to initiate movement in a flaccid hemiplegic limb so once the muscle tone is initiated see in this reflexes we have nice for example you take ankle uh, dorsiflexion as a example there is a reflex called becherius reflex if you if you use this reflex in acute flaccid case just stroke fifth day of four, fifth day post stroke client you can initiate dorsiflexion in hemiplegic case dorsiflexion is a horse horn dorsiflexion in ankle wrist extension and finger extension in upper limb is the toughest components in hemiplegic patients most of us will fail in this two components you will make patient to walk you will make patient to do every activity when you see you will land up in trouble when you start working on ankle dorsiflexion or wrist extension finger extension wrist extension and finger extension is very 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 tough in 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 training or in getting in uh, hemiplegic clients if you use eclectic approach as per eclectic approach we can use reflexes primitive reflexes postural reflexes associated reactions etc etc these reflexes and reactions will initiate muscle contraction it will initiate movement in a acute case within 3 sessions or 5 sessions you will find a significant difference even a visible difference in a movement or a palpable contraction in a muscle once muscle tone is initiated wean the stimuli in sequence we should stop using the stimuli in sequence we should stop one by one use techniques to gain control over the movements or muscle activity encourage normal movement patterns avoid patterns positions stimulus which facilitates or abnormal posture movement or abnormal tone this is very 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 important you should always avoid patterns movement patterns or positions stimulus which facilitates abnormal posture or abnormal movement or abnormal tone repeat only correctly performed movements you should hear most of our physios used to misunderstand used to get misunderstand misunderstanding that we should repeat more number of times so that brain will register more and uh, the patient will perform better more the repetition uh, the performance the learning will be good yes of course it is right but it is correctly performed movement should be repeated not a compensatory movement or not a compensatory or a, or a trick movement to be repeated only correctly performed movements to be repeated if you repeat a synergistic movement or a compensatory movement more and more what will happen it will register in brain it will it will it will strengthen the engrams motor engrams in the brain so it, then once the movement is strengthened in brain it is very difficult to bring out of synergy movements in limbs so whatever movements you are doing in limb it will be registered in the brain as engrams so then it is very difficult to change it, the engram so always repeat 
the correctly performed movements. Emphasize functional incorporation and training. Always your therapy should have a functional link. The final thing what is expected in hemiplegic patient is improvement in ADL. He should be able to be independent in his activities of daily living and to, to the maximum extent in workplace. That is the aim. So every training, every therapy protocol or uh, uh, the training program you design, keep in mind that should be helpful in improving the functional status of the client. That is important. So coming to the spastic patient. Again, we have to address the tone. To reduce spasticity is the first and foremost thing in a spastic hemiplegic client. Without reducing spasticity, no exercise will be beneficial. No exercise can be performed in a right way. So you should use again reflexes, postures, trunk and pelvis facilitation to decrease the muscle tone. So <clears throat> what we traditionally what we used to do again we are depending on proprioceptive and extraceptive stimuli. Uh, for a spastic client our traditional physiotherapy says slow gentle sustained stretching, icing, weight bearing, uh, st stroking. So like this again the traditional physiotherapy says the usage of proprioceptive and extraceptive stimulus as i told you in flaccid patient same applies in spastic patient these proprioceptive and extraceptive stimulus are not sufficient or efficient in altering the muscle contraction or the tonal status of the muscle or the movement pattern so again, we should rely on reflexes, post, postures, postural reflexes, primitive reflexes, trunk pelvis facilitation, etc. should be used to reduce spasticity in the hemiplegic limb. Once muscle tone is neutralized, use the momentary period for training. Here the keyword, you, you see the word momentary period. Why I mentioned it as momentary period means if you use all these reflexes, etc., etc., you say you take antispastic drug also, it has the effective time, effective duration. For say 45 minutes or one hour or the maximum two hours, the spasticity will be controlled. Once, once the medicinal effect goes down, the original spasticity will come. The tone will increase and the patient will go back to the previous state. Same. So that's why I mentioned momentary period. Here you can ask me a question. If it is going again to the original, that is the, to the spastic stage, why we have to use all these things? What is the use? The answer is, of, yes, you have to use all these things, all these reflexes, postures, etc. to reduce spasticity in the hemiplegic limb, the tone will come down for certain amount of time. It may be seconds or minutes. It may be depends on the status of the patient and depends on the strength of stimulus what you use. That momentary period is the golden period for you to initiate muscle activity or to initiate a muscle activity or to initiate movement in the antispastic muscles or antispastic movement pattern. Again, I repeat, for example, if the patient has the toughest synergy, plus plexus synergy, for example, you take biceps, biceps, elbow flexion, elbow flexion is the strongest one. Biceps is the muscle which is tremendously affected with spasticity. You are using all these primitive reflexes, etc. You are getting some amount of tone reduction in biceps. So I told you it will be momentary. It may, be, it may be seconds or minutes. So you have to use this golden period to facilitate triceps muscle. 
to facilitate elbow extension movement so that the momentary tone reduction is a the momentary tone reduction will help you tremendously in facilitation of antispastic movements so in other words we can say this spastic muscle this synergistic dominant synergistic movement pattern is restricting the anti synergistic movements so when you reduce the tone in the spastic muscle or in the synergistic muscle that will be a golden period for the opponent that is the anti spastic muscle for example triceps to get initiated to get activated to get strengthened so you can use that momentary period to facilitate the movements anti spastic movements or anti spastic muscle activity encourage normal movement patterns avoid patterns position stimulus which facilitates abnormal posture or movement or tone repeat only correctly performed movements emphasize functional incorporation and training the same we discussed in our uh, uh, flaccid case only correctly performed movements to be repeated you should always have a functional linkage whatever therapy protocol whatever training you give it should have an positive and significant impact on the activities of daily living of the client then only your therapy will be fruitful to the client without improving his functional status whatever improvement you get is not going to be appreciated much by the client or by the insurance companies because insurance companies nowadays they are asking the difference in terms of function whether the patient is able to walk whether the patient is able to eat on his own whether the patient is able to drive whether the patient is able to resume his job so in terms of functional activity they are expecting uh, uh, um, status uh, improvement status from us here avoid patterns positions i'll tell you a simple example when you make the patient to bend the neck like this for example if you position a hemiplegic patient when you position a hemiplegic patient in long sitting in long sitting in acute hemiplegic case when you position a patient in long sitting in hospital bed by keeping pillows behind the neck that position itself will facilitate flexor synergy because of symmetric tonic neck reflex stnr this stnr will get facilitated and will result in facilitation of flexor synergy so the position of client in the bed that position itself will facilitate some movements and inhibit certain movements most of the time it facilitates the synergistic movements than anti synergistic movements so we all we used to write uh, the benefits of position positioning in hemiplegics we used to write it to prevent bed sores to prevent musculoskeletal deficits for example uh, joint tightness and uh, range of motion uh, deficits no this are all secondary the primary thing what we should being a neurological physiotherapist or a eclectic approach therapist we should say that particular position will facilitate spasticity that for the particular position will facilitate anti synergistic movements in turn it will inhibit the anti spastic movements anti synergistic movements anti spastic muscles in that aspect we should understand that the posture which is used in a hemiplegic client we should know the posture benefits merits and demerits we should know in which posture the synergistic muscles will get activated in which posture the synergistic movement combinations will be strengthened in which posture anti synergistic movements will get initiated so like that in terms of muscle contraction and movement facilitation you should think 
the post position man positioning of a hemiplegic client not with bed sore not with uh, um, joint tightness muscle stiffness uh, shortening etc etc a stroke recovery is because of medicine surgery or physiotherapy um, it's a wonderful question when we discuss when i discuss with a neurologist neurosurgeon we used to chat the neurosurgeon say, told the well, brain will recover on its own man then i used to um, uh, just kid him it's my friend i used to ask, then why you are giving medicine it will recover on its own just it's a funny discussions we used to have the same you he used to tell me whether you give physiotherapy or not that patient will walk with the, by using a stick you see most of the poor clients are uh, out of uh, government hospitals uh, free uh, hospitals they are walking on their own by using a stick with a, some compensatory movement they used to say yes of course in this fun we should understand the science behind it med there is no need of medicine for the brain to recover of course but for the person to survive after stroke you need medicine and you need surgery if it is a life saving surgery definitely it is needed the medicines especially to stabilize the vitals vital signs to be stabilized for that medicine is mandatory once the patient vitals are stabilized except for bp and diabetes or other any other systemic illness or associated illness is there medication is needed other than that there is no medicine to treat post stroke clients once the patient is out of hospital once he is stabilized once his vitals are stable he has to continue medications for his associated illness like blood hypertension diabetes mellitus or, or any other associated illness he has to continue medicine other than that there is no medicine for post stroke clients for brain recovery again the surgery we know surgery is a life saving procedure especially in hemorrhagic stroke barhol surgery is a um, wonderful uh, surgery for evacuating the hemorrhagic blood and to restore the brain um, structure and to prevent the midline shift and to prevent the Uh, compression of vital centers and to prevent the enlargement of the lesion so like this there are many benefits of hemorrhagic uh, surgeries in acute stroke clients once the surgery is over again the healing will take place on its own now again same like medicine and surgery there is no need of so people say no need of physiotherapy brain will recover on its own and the patient will be able to walk yes of course it is right but for normal recovery you need physiotherapy for abnormal recovery you don't need physiotherapy this is the important thing we should understand we should emphasize we should acknowledge we should establish we should um, authenticate so for for normal recovery for a stroke claim to become near normal you need physiotherapy if you want if if you don't know if the patient why for example you say if a patient has to walk near normal then physiotherapy is needed if a patient walks with a circumductory gait with a scoliotic spine with flexor synergy uh, synergy in the affected side by using a stick then there is no need of physiotherapy without physiotherapy the patient will be walking like a typical hemiplegic person holding a stick on the normal side having a strong flexor synergy of upper limb and strong circumductory gait pattern in the lower limb so he doesn't need physiotherapy he will end up in that situation with physiotherapy you can make the patient near normal that is the difference with physiotherapy and without physiotherapy at the outset brain will recover on its own it is of nature it is because of nature brain will recover on its own unless or otherwise if there is no infectious cause or inflammatory or a degenerative disease brain will recover on its own 
infectious, inflammatory, degenerative, demyelinating, progressive neuro neurodegenerative diseases, brain will not recover on its own. Otherwise, apart from these causes, brain will recover on its own. In many situations, unknowingly or unfortunately, stroke management facilitates or fails to prevent abnormal recovery. It is because of the lack of uh, technical uh, ideas in physiotherapy side. Most of the time, the um, physios used to treat the hemiplegic clients without understanding the neurological approaches. Leads to our results in complications like abnormal synergy, spasticity, musculoskeletal deficits, pain, etc. I hope many of you people will accept that uh, our stroke clients will land up with abnormal synergy, spasticity, musculoskeletal deficits, pain, etc. Abnormal to near normal recovery is the role of physiotherapy. Here there is a huge gap. This is the gap to be filled by physiotherapists. He has to make the patient to jump from abnormal to near normal pattern. This is the gap which is present in stroke clients. So this we have to facilitate the client to jump from abnormal to near normal status. So we'll just three, three cases I will uh, give as example with ecliptic approach I have treated a 54 years old scientist from Bangalore come to me he had hemorrhagic stroke with right hemiplegia met me after two years of treatment from various physios he has taken uh, ayurvedic treatment allopathy ayurvedic massage ayurvedic treatments physiotherapy from various physios two years post stroke he came to me he met me. I have seen him with a strong fluxus energy of upper limb, circumductory gait, poor trunk balance with scoliosis, muscle wasting of rotator cuff, deltoid, gluteus muscles, etc. I'll, uh, for um, see, considering the time, I'll take only the upper limb of this client. He had a strong finger flexion and fluxus energy. Just see this video. One second, sorry, there is a small technical defect. I'll... I'll show in this. You can see the flexus energy of this client. can see the finger flexion I have asked them to lift the hand whatever command whatever command you give to a hemiplegic client you ask him to lift the hand or you ask him to touch the face or you ask him to touch the mouth Whatever activity you give to the hemiplegic client, the patient, once he tries to move the limb, it will naturally, automatically, it will go into flexion synergy. So this was the status of that client. Here are two things you should understand. One, two years post-stroke. 
Number two, he had complications like disuse of deltoid, etc. So now you see the same client. I asked him to touch the opposite hand. You see the movement pattern what he is using. Same synergistic movement. You can see the wrist. You can see the uh, finger flexion attitude. See the struggle. He is not able to come out of the synergistic movements. So the same client You can see the recovery of this client. You see the wonderful finger extension, wrist extension. You see the quality of movement. It will become difficult for you to assess which side is hemiplegic. See the difference. See how fantastically he is doing. Post stroke, after two years, he came to me. After two years, he came to me with flexor synergy. See the quality of movement, achieving finger extension, wrist extension is the highest level of recovery in hemiplegic lines. You see the same client driving two wheeler. The same client is driving two wheeler. He took around nine months of therapy in our in our clinic. This is the parking area of our clinic. So I made him to drive the two wheeler and took the video. Coming to case number two. Again, a 65 year old, it's a very interesting case. 65 years old, acute right hemiplegic. So, since we have short of time, I'll rush up. 
here completely flaccid bedridden with shoulder subluxation is a known case of periarthritis shoulder and liver cirrhosis you can see this is the picture of that client came to our clinic we have made him to put in a tilt table vitals were not satisfactorily stable anyhow we managed the same first day you can see the status of the client completely flaccid just he is collapsing just he is collapsing it's literally collapsing when we take off the support immediately he will fall there is very 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 poor trunk balance you can see the flaccidity of the right upper limb slowly is progressing flaccid flaccid the important thing you should see here is the wrist finger flexion and wrist finger wrist and finger extension with the eclectic approach you will not get finger flexion or wrist flexion that is the magic miracle of our eclectic approach see the same client who, who had right hemiplegic flaccid hemiplegic hemiplegia a known case of periarthritis right periarthritis shoulder again in this case you can see the wrist extension and finger extension you see you can you can clearly see here wrist extension and finger extension that is this is the magic what we do in uh, the same client you can see how he goes inside the car acute hemiplegia see how easily you observe the observe the upper limb here you observe the upper upper limb here you observe the upper limb upper limb upper limb yes you see how beautifully he extends and kept the wrist and fingers in extended position this is the magic and miracle of eclectic approach you see here once he comes out we have trained him bit hard you see here now he, he will be able to extend his limb yes extend yes you can see now right upper limb is a known case of periarthritis shoulder right periarthritis shoulder he had got stroke in the same side you see he is able to start eating with this affected side he is having a periarthritis lack of time i am rushing sorry you can see he will be able to lift the slippers with both the hands you see and he will be able to unwrap and wrap the buckles of the slippers on his own case number 3 a 3 year old right hemiplegic after cardiac surgery she developed the stroke after 6 months they came to our the center sorry the video quality is poor see the walking pattern of the it's literally dragging with flexor synergy of left upper limb you can see the improvement later see there is no synergistic dominance left left hemiplegia there is no synergistic dominance so we have me is yes. what we understood from these cases there is no real plateau in hemiplegic recovery after 2 years of stroke also we got fine movements and i made the patient to drive uh, two wheeler motor control voluntary control can be trained in any stage or any age at any point of time eclectic approach is the only solution default deficits the biggest challenge in treating stroke clients are um, um, like uh, the biggest challenges you should you, you know everything in this i challenge i challenge with eclectic approach 
spasticity can be suppressed, inhibited, circumdictory gait eliminated, abnormal synergy in limbs can be eliminated, wrist and finger flexion deformity will not come, shoulder subluxation, complex regional pain syndromes will not occur, tightness, contractures and many more complications will never happen with eclectic approach usage in stroke patients. It's eclectic approach is a four days course. My suggestion to academicians, clinicians and students and all please go with hands-on training uh, equipment, hands-on trainings, develop your skill. They, that is very, very important. For course details, you can visit my website raghavphysio.com, R-A-G-H-A-V physio.com, raghavphysio.com. Uh, you can get details of all my courses, eclectic approach, motor relearning program, brainstorm movement therapy, myofascial trigger point therapy, etc. I do courses mostly on uh, stroke and myofascial trigger point therapy. So my course is accredited by Delhi Council of Physiotherapy, Dubai Health Authority, Ministry of Health, Sultanate, Oman. So my course has credit points of 19.5 in Gulf, that is in Dubai and 15 points in Sultanate of Oman. And I'm trying with some other countries to get accredited. What makes difference between man and man is commitment. Let us commit ourselves to care and to cure the ailments with utmost responsibility. This is my take home message. Catch me at ragophysio.com. Thank you very much to one and all. And I'm waiting for your questions. Thank you, Prof. Uh, it was really an insightful presentation. And we have got a very clear idea about what is ecliptic approach and the importance of it in stroke. Okay. So with this, we have come to the end of today's session. And thank you, Prof. Tiagarajan, for joining us today and providing such insightful information. To a wonderful audience, thank you for joining us at this webinar. We look forward for your comments and participation at future events hosted by Massa University. In case of any further queries, you can contact us through Massa website or visit our social media. Have a pleasant weekend.